It's time for us to begin tonight. If you would come in and have a seat. I know that, uh, first of all, I want to say how much I appreciate you coming to Corsicana. You know, when you look at the map of all the different locations of the uh, Summer Youth Series, they're all kind of in a bunch, and then there's Corsicana way down here. So I know it's a long way to get down here. It's been about seven years since we've hosted the Summer Youth Series, and uh, so thankful that you are here. Um, I know there may be a few more congregations, a couple I know of, that are on their way, uh, but we need to go ahead and get started. They'll trickle in as we go. Uh, we have a, a great time, I think, a, a wonderful lesson tonight. Brother Corey Myers, is one of our, uh, he's our uh, uh, associate minister here, youth minister here, uh, preaching on what am I good for? Uh, we've been going on these wonderful questions, challenging us to uh, think about our place in the church and and here's one that's important. What am I good for? And so we look forward to that. But before uh, he comes and leads us or, or brings that message, Brother Paul Delgado, who works as the uh, uh, youth and family minister at the Northwest Congregation in Fort Worth, will be leading our singing. I uh, we'll always look forward to, to that. Uh, I, I know that some of you got to hear him last week when he was there uh, doing that. But he, he's, he's a great song leader, and we appreciate the songs that he has uh, uh, brought out. And then later, after all things are over, uh, we, we've got a meal prepared, uh, which is uh, you know, brisket sandwiches, uh, barbecued sausage sandwiches. So uh, it, it'll be pretty good. Look forward to that. So uh, before we get started, if you would, bow with me for a word of prayer. Our Holy Father, we are so blessed and thankful to be called your children, to have an opportunity to love you and serve you, to call upon your name for the salvation that we desire, to look upon you for the guidance for the life that we need. We are so thankful, Heavenly Father, for every heart and every mind that is here tonight that is open and ready to receive your word. We pray that you'll be with Brother Paul as he's leading the singing for us, and also Corey as he brings the message a little bit later. We know, Heavenly Father, that as we worship in this devotion towards you, that, uh, that it pleases you. And may the, the worship of song and prayer and, and study that we give tonight be a sweet savor to you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. We will glorify the King of Kings. We will glorify the Lamb. We will glorify the Lord of Lords, who is the great I Am. Lord Jehovah reigns in majesty. We will bow before His throne. We will worship Him in righteousness. We will worship Him alone. He is Lord of heaven, Lord of earth. He is Lord of all who live. He is Lord above the universe. All praise to Him we give. So hallelujah to the King of kings. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lord of lords, who is the great I am. I stand to praise you, but I fall on my knees. My spirit is willing, but my flesh is so weak. Light the fire in my soul, fan the flame, make me whole. Lord, you know. In my heart again, I feel your arms around me as the power of your healing begins. 
You'll breathe new life right through me Like a mighty rushing wind Like the fire in my soul Fan the flame, make me whole Lord, you know where I've been So the fire in my heart again let's See, let's, uh, let's stand as we sing this next song How do you explain, how do you describe a love that goes from east to west and runs as deep as it is wide? You know all our hopes, Lord, you know all our fears. And words cannot express the love we feel, but we long for you to hear. So listen to our hearts, hear our spirits sing, a song of praise that flows from those who have redeemed. We will use the words we know to tell you what an awesome God you are. But words are not enough to tell you of our love. So listen to our hearts. If words could fall like rain from these lips of mine, And if I had a thousand years, Lord, I would still run out of time. If you listen to my heart, every beat will say, Thank you for the life, thank you for the truth, Lord, thank you for the way. So listen to our hearts, hear our spirits sing, a song of praise that flows from those who have redeemed. We will use the words we know to tell you what an awesome God you are, but words are not enough. To tell you of our love, so listen to our hearts. But words are not enough to tell you of our love, so listen to our hearts. You may be seated. I am a sheep and the Lord is my shepherd. Watching over my soul, my soul to keep guarding over me ever, watching wherever I go. And when the winds blow, he is my shelter. When I'm lost and alone, he rescues me. And when the lion comes, he is my victory, constantly watching over me. He is constantly watching over me. We are his children and he is our father watching over our soul. Great is his love for his sons and his daughters, watching wherever we go. And when the winds blow, he is my shelter. When I'm lost and alone, he rescues me. And when the lion comes, he is my victory.
worry, constantly watching over me. He is constantly watching over me. And when the winds blow, He is my shelter. When I'm lost and alone, He rescues me. And when the lion comes, He is my victory. Constantly watching over me. He is constantly watching over me. <clears throat> Every time I kneel to pray, I open up my heart to my Lord. I feel the sweet embrace of my Lord. I don't know why so many things seem to get in the way of seeing my God's glory. try every day to see him and to thank him for all the things he's given me. Every time I see a child, I see the gentleness of my Lord. time I watch a storm, I know the awesome power of my Lord. I don't know why so many things seem to get in the way of sin. For all the things he's given me. Every time I see the cross. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, we lift up your name with hearts full, hearts full of praise, so be exalted. O oh Lord, my God, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, Glory, glory to the King of Kings. Glory, glory, glory to the King of Kings. Lord, we lift up your name with hearts full, hearts full of praise, so be exalted. O oh Lord, my God, O oh Santa in the highest. Holy Lord, most holy Lord, you alone are worthy of my praise. So oh, holy Lord, most holy Lord, 
with all of my heart I sing Great are you Lord Worthy of praise Holy and true Great are you Lord Most holy Lord Holy Lord Most holy Lord You alone are worthy of my praise O holy Lord Most holy Lord With all of my heart I sing Great are you Lord Worthy of praise Holy and true Great are you Lord Most holy Lord Great are you Lord Worthy of praise Holy and true Great are you Lord Most holy Lord <coughs> Holy words Long preserved For our walk In this world They resound With God's own heart Though let the ancient words Impart Words of life Words of hope Give us strength Help us cope in this world, where'er we roam, ancient words will guide us home. Ancient words ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come with open hearts. Oh, let the ancient words impart Holy words, love our faith And knit down to this age Came to us through sacrifice Oh, heed the faithful words of Christ Holy words Long preserved for our walk in this world. They resound with God's own heart. Oh, let the ancient words impart. Ancient words ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come with open hearts. Oh, let the ancient words impart. We have come with open hearts. Oh, let the ancient words impart. Let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich. Let the blind say I can see. It's what the Lord has done in me. Let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich. Let the blind say I can see.
see. It's what the Lord has done in me. Hosanna, Hosanna to the Lamb that was slain. Hosanna, Hosanna, Jesus died and rose again. Hosanna, Hosanna to the Lamb that was slain. Hosanna, Hosanna, Jesus died and rose again. Into the river I will wait. There my sins are washed away From the heaven's mercy stream Of the Savior's love for me I will rise from waters deep Into the saving arms of God I will sing salvation song. Jesus Christ has set me free. Hosanna, Hosanna to the Lamb that was slain. Hosanna, Hosanna, Jesus died and rose again. Hosanna, Hosanna to the Lamb that was slain. Hosanna, Hosanna, Jesus died and rose again. If we will, let's skip over to As the Deer Thirsts. As a deer thirst for the water, Lord, so my soul longs after you. My soul thirst for the living God. Yes, my soul longs after you. And I pour out my soul deep within me, deep within me. I pour out my soul. Draw me deeper, Lord, deeper, Lord, in you. Draw me deeper, Lord, deeper, Lord, in you. As a deer thirst for the water, Lord, so my soul longs after you. My soul thirst for the living God. <clears throat> yes, my soul longs after you. And I pour out my soul deep within me. Deep within me, I pour out my soul. Draw me deeper, Lord, deeper, Lord, in you. Draw me deeper, Lord, deeper, Lord, in you. And I pour out my soul deep within me. Deep within me, I pour out my soul. Draw me deeper, Lord, deeper, Lord, in you. 
My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God. My Savior, my soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God. My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God. My Savior, my soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God. My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God. My Savior, my soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God. My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God. My Savior, my soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God. My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God. My Savior, my soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God. Well, let's uh, jump to On Zion's Glorious Summit. And then following this song, we will have our lesson. <coughs> On Zion's Glorious Summit stood a numerous host redeemed by blood. They him their king in strength divine. I heard the song and strove to join. I heard the song and strove to join. Hear all who suffered sword or flame for truth or Jesus' lovely name. Shout victory now and hail the Lamb and bow before the great I am and bow before the great I am while everlasting ages roll eternal love shall feast their soul and seems a bliss forever do rise in succession to their view rise in succession to their view. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of all son I adore, who like me Thy praise should sing, no Almighty King, holy, holy, holy Lord, God of false. 
have our lesson. Wow. Thank you for being here, Paul. Thank you for leading singing, and thank you, thank you for uh, singing out so beautifully. Uh, it's a blessing to be here. We're blessed that you're here. We're so glad and so thankful that you're here. Excited to have this opportunity tonight. As we're gathered here, uh, I couldn't help but think about the audience and the question before us and, and what we're talking about. And I, I thought about a young man. I, I was 17. I was 17 and I, I knew better than my parents and I knew better uh, than, than everybody, really. Uh, and my selfish thoughts and the things that were part of my life, you know, I I, I just, you know, wasn't uh, capable of living anymore in the home in which I was in. Uh, they weren't accepting of the, the things that I wanted to do. I knew better than they, they knew. And, and all of these things piled together, and I just felt misunderstood. And so one night, a few months before I was to graduate, I packed my bags after, mom and, after my dad and my stepmom went to bed. I packed my bags, and, and I, after writing a ugly self-serving letter I went out the window and that was the last time I had the privilege of living in my father's house that was the last time I had the privilege of living in my father's house and I want to leave that young man right there and I, I want to talk about something tonight and I, I want to think about something that I, I think the lessons that he learned and the things that he was taught can, can dramatically transform lives in this room tonight I believe the questions that have been brought before us, uh, I, I believe you're a vital part of the congregation in which you worship. You're a vital part, and if you're not, you're expected to be. God desires you to be, and that's why in the wisdom of those who put this great summer study together, we've been asked to investigate the question tonight, what am I good for? What am I good for? Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever felt like you weren't good for anything? Have you ever felt like, I'm better than this, I, I could do more, or there's something that, that was missing in your life, and you just, I, what am I good for? And, and so it was a question I thought was very well placed, as we've had the opportunity uh, this summer to look at many things. And uh, we've been looking at God's design for his church, his plan for membership, his plan for the worship of the church, uh, the plan for the organization, the leadership of the church, the morality of the church, and so many more studies that could assist our understanding of God's church. And I believe the obvious answer to all of those things and all of those questions is, is you can take part and you can be a part and you ought to be uh, a part of every single one of those questions. You, you fit there. You, you're so much a part of it. And yet I think there's a disconnect sometimes, right? Uh, the, the world in which uh, our church leaders, our parents, um, those who are burdened with the responsibility of teaching you and helping you to grow and to the wisdom and the knowledge of Jesus. Those who have been given that responsibility and then you in the world you see, in the church how you see it, there's, there's big holes in those two ideas and what's supposed to take place. And sometimes we don't do such a good job of filling them in. We, we don't understand maybe and we misunderstand and, and there's things that we need to know and to be able to help you and Sometimes we don't do it the way we ought to. But I want to look tonight, and I think there, there's three biblical thoughts that I want to put before you that, that I believe hold up this idea. Uh, they, they hold up this idea, and, they, and really the answer to the question that's before, what am I good for? What am I good for? So that after tonight, and we look at these three things together, um, if you go home and you talk with your youth leader, or you're having the conversation together on the way home, and, and you say, Man, there, there were so many more things that I'm good for. Uh, I can do so many more things. He, he didn't even begin to touch uh, the things and the opportunities. What would I even maybe do now? I would say that the time that we spent together has been well worth it. 
I would say a hearty amen to that, and I would absolutely agree. And we won't touch all those things, and we won't have a long list of the things that you can do. But I believe these three thoughts, they, they hold up this idea so that, that when you go home, when you go home, you can humbly, yet profoundly, boldly be and say, this, see, this is what I'm good for. God has made me. He's created me. I can contribute. I can cr- contribute. I can thrive. God desires that for you. And I hope you'll study with me and understand, though, that as we look at these three, three things, what we end up seeing is that Scripture puts that burden on you. Scripture puts that burden on you to come up and say, ultimately, that, I, yeah, I am good for this. We don't have the opportunity to make excuses and to put that on anybody else. It, it all comes down to us. And so I hope that you'll go with me tonight and, and study with uh, under these three thoughts and see what it has to say. And it's been my prayer that you'll do that together with me. And the first thought is just simply this, that you're chosen, that you're chosen. We'll be in First Peter if you have your Bibles. We'll be in First Peter if you have your Bibles. You are chosen. Does that seem maybe cliche? What, what am I going to Yeah, we've heard that sermon. We're, we're a peculiar people. We're a, a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. And we, we think about what the message there is in First Peter. But I think there's a word that's used as you open up your Bibles and you begin to see uh, what takes place in First Peter 1 and 2 that, that helps us that understands, that challenges the cliche, that that reaches deeper and helps us to understand we're vital. You're vital. You're an instrumental part of what God's designed and wants the church to be where you live. To the pilgrims of the dispersion in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father and sanctification of the Spirit for obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace be multiplied. Do you see that little phrase at the top there, uh, the the pilgrims of the dispersion? It's this interesting word, and and it was like this term of endearment. Does your mom or dad have a a word that they use for you that's different than your name? Uh, Honey, bub, anybody? I see heads uh, nodding and shaking, and yeah. And so there's sort of this idea, and maybe it's not as personal as yours is, but there's this idea, and it's expressed in Scripture, Deuteronomy 7 and verse 5 and 6, you can see sort of this idea, Uh, but in in many other places. And what this word alluded to and, and identified was God's people that were scattered out in a world that misunderstood them. Hey, and part of it maybe was because of persecution, right? At this time in Peter's writing, the church and in small pockets and waves is being persecuted uh, for simply wearing the name of Jesus. Just for trying to be who God has called them to be in Christ. And so they're being persecuted, they're being uh, torn apart. Or maybe it was a, li- a lifestyle choice and, and they chose to go uh, for, for their work. I, I don't know all the reasons, but here is this word that identifies people who love God and yet they're scattered about, uh, away from their worship, right? Because Jerusalem, the place where God himself dwelt, where my brethren dwelt in abundance, do you love coming to Summer Youth Series? <laughs> I, I love it. I passed uh, a lady walking in the hall, and she's been saying all day how excited she was to, to, to get to see you here, to hear voices singing together, praying together, to see just the zeal. And the, this is un, unbelievable. And so they left that. There wasn't large congregations of people where, where they had gone. The, the diaspora, these are the people that are scattered abroad in a world that's, that's very much different than where they were. Do you ever feel that way? Do you ever feel maybe um, misunderstood? <laughs> I, I think that you are misunderstood. I, I believe you're, you're very misunderstood. And sometimes I struggle to understand. Uh, and I know your parents do. Um, one of those things that maybe identifies that, and maybe this will help illustrate where I'm going, is the idea that, uh, of Pokemon. Uh, anybody been playing Pokemon lately? Um, good, yeah. 
I, I've got to admit, I, I was a little, uh, you know, I don't understand it still. Um, uh, I didn't play Pokemon when I was younger. I had a lot of friends that did, and I, I just, I, I love the idea of Pokemon, but the game came out, and I was a little uh, taken back by people that were older than me playing the game. I've got to be honest. Uh, but in the end, I said, you know, if, you, if you're playing and you're having fun, that, that's awesome. That's great. I was a little taken back by the ugly things I saw on social media about young people playing this game. And uh, I got to thinking about the generation of people that are about my age and older who started making fun of Pokemon and the things that were taking place. And I got to thinking and comparing it. Um, the generation that's making fun of you guys playing Pokemon is also the one that gave us Care Bears. Uh, not only did they give us Care Bears, um, they're the ones that invented this great game. Uh, you're foolish for going around chasing Pokemon on your device, but they, they weren't for throwing large, uh, sharp objects into the air and letting them come down and, and land next to them. Uh, so not only did they do these two things, but this is their athletic wear that they decided to uh, get along with. And, as I thought about their arguments and the things, there's, I just don't think they have very many legs to stand on. Um, and I don't mean to bash parents, and I understand I'm uh, already outdated, and uh, my nine-year-old's helping me, and, and, and uh, I'm learning those lessons already. But I think it does point out an issue, and it does point out an idea. It, it begins to bring to mind, at least in a silly way, there's some more serious issues. Uh, for instance, how many of you would say that your parents just completely don't understand social media or your grandparents, uh, social media and the, the things that are taking place? I talk to parents all the time and, like, you know, I just, that's the kid thing. I don't really get it. I don't understand. Uh, and yet, what, what do they do? Here, have free reign. Here, take this phone and, and put it in your pocket and do whatever you want with it. Hey, keep it by your bed and 24-7 you can pull this right by your side. And yet we've also sent you this message that says, hey, love the Lord. Be holy. First Peter 1 and verse 15 and 16 gets into this idea. You're elect, right? You're, the, you're, the, you're my chosen people. Be holy as I am holy. And yet we, we put these devices right next to you that just challenge that, don't they? They, I, I understand the struggle that you're in. We understand that it's so difficult if we think about selfishness. We think about gossip. We think about the problem that that's created in pornography and addiction. And the struggle that you face, we know that. And I wanted to tell you, and I think this is one of those things that holds up this idea as we're coming to understand what am I good for. I, I promise we'll get there. Here's this idea that God knows that you're in a culture and you're in a place that doesn't understand you as teenagers, as young people trying to find yourself and trying to be who God wants you to be, he knows. Elect, you of the diaspora. He calls down from heaven and he says, you know what, I, I love you. <laughs> we know you're my chosen people. Hold on to those thoughts and we're going to kind of put them together in a moment because here's a second thing though. What am I good for? And this idea is connected to uh, you, you're chosen it's very much connected, but, and it seems really simple, but, but you're loved. I know it's simple. I know you're getting really, really profound, aren't you, Corey? As you stand before, you're chosen, you're loved. We know God is love. We realize, we, we sing the songs, Jesus loves me since I, I, I'm a little one, don't we? And we, we talk about that all the time. But when we begin to see what the scriptures say in First Peter, as you move on, I, I want to read these to you you follow along or perhaps you're in your Bible. If you call on the Father without partiality, he judges according to each one's work. Conduct yourselves throughout the time of your stay here in fear, knowing that you are not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. He indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the world. But he was manifest in these last times for you who through, the, through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and he gave him glory so that your faith and your hope are in God. There's no greater love than this, is there? The things identify as we think about 
we just stop and I know it, every day it gets more clear for me and so I know it's sometimes a struggle to begin to see the selfless act and love and how that affects my life. But I think it's easier. It was easier for me when I saw it in the heart of a, of a 16 year old. And, and I wanna share this story with you. Um, when he, he figured out he's loved, but he figured it out through a member of the body of Christ. Somebody maybe uh, you, you wouldn't think you would figure it out from. <laughs> How often does that happen at 15 and 16 year old, years old that your heart's broken and you come to realize and understand the love of Christ through somebody who looked like that? So one day, one day this young man, his name is Jacob, and uh, he recounts this story, but one day Jacob uh, had quite an argument with his father uh, he's getting at that age where he's sort of trying to, to test the limits and so forth. And, and he begins to have this really big argument with his dad. And, and they're fighting, and he has to go spend the day with him at work. And, and in the middle of all this fighting, this argument, dad tells him, hey, we're going to, to the nursing home later. <laughs> Exciting, right? Uh, I can't wait. And so he, he, he talks about his thoughts and the things that he was trying to uh, say. I said, I, I did not want to go. I tried every excuse under the sun using anything I could think of to persuade him to leave me behind. Why did he think that I would want to spend one of the last few afternoons of my summer in a quiet, boring, off-white painted room with an old lady that I barely knew and previously had fewer conversations with than the number of fingers on my hand? The, so the thought of sitting in that chair and listening to story after story, faking smiles and laughs while I looked out the window at the sun, it boiled my blood. I'm ashamed to this day of those thoughts. They haunt me from an age and a mind filled with immaturity, selfishness, and hardness. He says he drove in 45, uh, for 45 minutes in silence to the nursing home, his last stitch effort with his, his hands deep in his pockets, mad, angry for what his dad was making him do, all the while dad telling him, you need this, Jacob. You need this. And so as he's going through and they're, they're driving then, they, he says he walks in to find Rose sitting in an armchair underneath a layer of folded afghans with a, a smile big and sweet, worthy of a capital D smile in smiley text. I followed my father's lead and I greeted her with a polite hug and a forced grin. My hardened heart had yet to realize the val value of my presence alone. But for the next hour, Rose would chip away at my heart of stone. He talks about the stories in which were brought out. He says her da dad, his dad uh, coaxed, coaxed the stories out of her that her, her humble heart would not tell. Stories that talked about her faith, her love for God. Her stories that talked about her love for young people and the way that she had lived her life. And so, as story by story went, it came time to wrap up the visit. Rose reached out her pale and her weak hand to me. She looked me in the eyes, and, and she thanked me, he says. Then she told me she loved me. I'll never forget that moment that my heart burst, relieving itself of the remaining burden and the weight of stone it once carried. I held onto her hand for the prayer that Dad led before we left, the guilt and the shame of the terrible thoughts of my unloving selfishness that I had brought with me through the door weighed on my heavy heart. Once again, I felt myself trying everything under the sun, but this time it, the attempts to conceal, uh, it was attempts to conceal my weeping eyes. My sniffling betrayed me, and there was no way I could get away with my usual excuse of sweating around my eyeballs. Amen brought my eyes and Rose's eyes together again, but, but no words were spoken. She simply smiled at me. She knew. He goes on to talk about the way that affected his life and that 15 years old, 16 years old, as he enters junior year, a heart so hard. Do you, do you miss the opportunities and the way that God is shouting over and over, I love you? It, it becomes mundane when we gather around the table and we remember the sacrifice of Jesus each and every week. May stories like that help us to pause for a moment and realize how deep it was. A life that was affected by the love of Christ, by the blood of Christ, one that was redeemed, 
was calling out and knew he needed to be redeemed, that you're loved so deeply and so greatly. I believe when we come to understand that, do you struggle to, to, to fit in perhaps? And I think one of the things that, that hurts us and, and keeps us maybe from realizing what we're good for, that, that we can serve, that, that we have an opportunity, that we can make a difference in the body where we are is that, that generation gap. And sometimes in filling in those holes and, and understanding that we're to be one body. I love the story to think about a 93-year-old woman touching the heart of a 16-year-old boy because she helped him to see the love of Christ, the love of God. Do we understand right now at this moment before we move and we close with our final thought that I, I believe holds up this idea that you're good for, for everything, <laughs> that you can be a part of the body. You're loved and God is waiting. He's calling out, I want to use you. Follow me over and over and over. Not only are you chosen, not only are you loved, but I, I believe as we close, we find out that, that you're the one that's accountable. That, that you're the ones who is accountable. Look at this verse. Do you agree with that? Do you agree that the burden falls on your shoulders, that, that, it, that it's up to you for these things? Let no one despise your youth, but be an example to the believers in word and conduct, in love and spirit, in faith and purity till I come. Give attention to reading and to exhortation, to doctrine. Do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you by the prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the eldership. Meditate on these things. Give yourself entirely to them, that your progress may be evident to all. Take heed to yourself, to the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this, you'll save both yourself and for those who, and those who hear you. Did you notice something he did not say? You see it at the beginning of this verse? Let no one despise your youth. Do you realize what he didn't say? You know, Timothy, uh, you know, don't, you know, go around and, and uh, let people know that you, just because you're young, just because you're young that, that they should not despise you. He didn't say go around and make sure they know that. Go, read to the brethren. There's all these things and these list of things that he's supposed to tell the brethren to remind them to, to keep in their memory. And, and here's one thing that he said, show them. Don't let them despise you. He didn't mean stand there in front of them when you feel offended or you feel hurt or you feel like they just don't get you uh, to, to argue back and forth and to be there. He said, by the way that you live, in the, in the way that you walk, by the, the person that you are, you, call, you are here to make a difference. It was almost like it's an expectation. I don't have a slide for this, but I, I want to, to read an account from Matthew chapter 18 to you. And uh, I, I don't know exactly how old the, the children that Jesus is speaking of are when he begins to talk about this section of Scripture or, or, or when this is recorded. And who it was that Jesus put his hand on, I don't know if it was, it was like this young man sitting here, if it was, it was his age or if it was, it was this, you know, nine-year-old sitting here. If it, I don't know what age they were when Jesus put his hand on this person and he, and he said these words. At this time, the disciples came to Jesus saying, who then is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child to him. He set him in the midst of them. And he said, assuredly, I say to you, unless you're converted and you become as little children, you'll by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself as a little child, he's the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever receives one little child like this in my name receives me. I don't know if it's made sense yet or if it's come together like it has up here. As we think about the call that you're accountable did you see who made a difference? Who, who was it that allowed these disciples? Who was it that allowed the adults who he was speaking to to come and understand? Who was he saying was going to open their hearts and allow them to receive Jesus himself? It, it was you. It was a young person. 
I, I don't know exactly why God does it or, or how he does it in each and every circumstance, but what he does is, is sees that you're, you're so pure, <laughs> that you're willing to hold people accountable, that you'll call people out, right? That, that hey, that's not going to fly. You, you see things so clearly. You're so, the humility that's there, the selflessness when, when you're younger, the ability that you have to affect and touch lives. You can begin to touch lives that I can't touch and others cannot touch. And so Jesus calls and he, he puts this pressure on you. Remember your creator in the days of the, your youth before the difficult days come. The, the point is that you, you're good for everything. God needs you. Our churches need you to step up, that you're accountable. We don't have an opportunity to, to blame anybody. To, to put that off. Well, I didn't get the right teaching. I didn't get this or I didn't get that. God says, when we look at these verses, let no one despise you. There's something about the youthful qualities that you have, the ability for you to touch lives that can, that can transform hearts. That, that young man, in his selfishness, as he looked away, he was only focused on himself and looking forward to going off to live his life. The last time he, he spent in his father's house, I thank God that there were some young people that showed up in his life. There was a church body in Dripping Springs. I remember distinctly the day uh, or in the weeks of, of obeying the gospel, a little old lady came by and said, you know what? I can't wait to hear you give your first devotional. <laughs> I'm not giving a devotional. I don't plan to do that. And I remember the, the youth devos, and I remember seeing boldly the faith of young people in that congregation. I remember thinking about verses like 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 18, that God has placed each of us in the body according to his good pleasure, how he purposed. When that young man learned that, his, his life was changed. God began a good work in him. And I pray to God that, that he'll finish it like he promised to, that Paul promised to the Philippians. But I'm here before you and I just ask, do you know what you're good for? Have you begun to understand that God's calling you to be a vital part of the congregation in which you work? The place that, that, that you live, that you're, let no one despise you in your youth, but use that. I don't know if there's somebody here tonight that maybe was selfish like that young man, or, or there's another burden on your heart and you just haven't been accountable. You haven't seen a place for you to serve. There, there's something that's disconnected. I loved before the service started hearing how much uh, other uh, youth ministers and other leaders had impacted and, and helped other, uh, others of you. And I don't know if you all have that or not, but that's available to you. You are chosen. We live in a culture and a world in which it's very different. It's difficult to be godly. It's difficult to, to find our purpose and our place. But here God's calling out, I know you. You are a chosen people. You're a loved people. Yes, teenagers in this audience, God's calling out saying, I love you. I want you to follow me. Give up whatever else you have. Come to understand the love of Christ and the sacrifice that was made on your behalf. And be accountable. And today, if you haven't chosen to be accountable, to accept that love, to confess Jesus, today and every day, repenting of sins and being immersed in a watery grave of baptism, raised to walk in newness of life, being chosen uh, to be useful in his service, or perhaps there's somebody else and something we can help you with today, we, we'd love to do that as together we stand and as we sing. I need you, Lord, 
to come and start and gently break my heart. My sin is great, but I can see the glory set for me. Show me Father where to start and gently break my heart. My heart is hard, my soul so weak, the waves of evil got so deep. I need you, Lord, to come inside and gently break my heart. You may be seated. Thank you so much for being here. It's been a blessed opportunity for us to sing together and to worship to get our great God together. Uh, from what I understand, there's uh, maybe about 375, 375 that are here. Uh, thankfully, uh, there will be enough uh, sandwiches for everybody. I, I wasn't sure what to expect. Um, and so a few weeks ago, I told Tina and Billy, uh, uh, who were, were responsible for cooking all the food, that there will be, you know, uh, around 300, 350 people. Uh, and so we went last week to Northwest, and they said there's, there's 507. And so I, I really hated it, but I, I sent that text to her. And he said, hey, there's 507 tonight. Well, thankfully, they prepared for that many. But as we go through the line, uh, if you'll just grab one sandwich first. If you'll just grab one sandwich, I, I imagine there will there'll be an opportunity for, for leftovers after that. Um, but... I won't delay that anymore. We're going to have an opportunity. I know you're used to things, and we kind of tried to, to set it up just like you've always had. But if you'll go out these, these side doors or, or these doors here and funnel this way, there's four serving lines. Uh, there's four serving lines as you, you go through these doors and, and uh, out the back. So uh, I ho hope you'll do that. Before we do that and as, uh, before we go eat, uh, we're going to be closed in a word of prayer. And Rusty Owens... Uh, Hold on one second. I apologize. William came forward, and I thought he was just rejoining his group, but he was coming forward to respond to the invitation. He's asked that we would pray for his cousin, Judy Cut De Cutler, that had knee replacement surgery, but especially for himself, that he might be a better Christian. And uh, I know in times like this, sometimes we feel inadequate, and we recognize that we are chosen, that we are loved, and that we are now accountable. Uh, and so we appreciate his desire to be right. And so... Um, and you're going to lead a closing prayer, right? Why don't you come and uh, pray also for William and during that prayer, Rusty. Thank you. If you would bow with me, please. Our Holy Heavenly Father, we are so blessed to be here tonight. We come before you humbly, thanking you for the opportunities that we have, like tonight, to, to be able to come together as your children come together as a family, though we may not know each other, we know that we are a family of yours, we're children of yours. We pray that as we uh, find these opportunities, as we go through our lives, whether we're um, young or whether we're old, that we always seek them out, for we know that, that when we gather together as your children, we know that you're here in our presence. We thank you so much for that. Well, we pray that you'll be with William tonight as he's come forward. We pray that you will uh, heal him, bless him, give him strength. Pray that you will um, allow the things that may be in his life that, that, that may be stumbling blocks or may cause him to, to leave the path that you have set before us. Lord, we pray that you will to, to help him to, to avoid those and to seek you in all things. We pray that you will be with his 
a uh, family member that is, um, is also um, need, needs some help, pray that you will be with them as they go through this procedure and, and, um, and that you will heal them and, and bless them. Lord, we, again, we thank you so much for the blessings of this life. We thank you so much for the opportunities to come here. We, we thank you for the, the safe travels that so many uh, made here. We pray that as they go home that they will uh, reach, reach that destination safely as well. Lord, we also thank you for those who have uh, helped to put on uh, things like tonight, those who, uh, Corey, who have brought us this lesson, uh, the, um, the gentleman who led the singing, the, uh, the, all the souls who sang out. Lord, we thank you so much. We also thank you for the men and women in the back who have uh, prepared the meal. We pray that that food will help to strengthen us, and through that strength, we will be servants of yours. Uh, we pray that you will forgive us of our many sins. And it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen.